batteries. These fun little bundles of lithium power pretty much every digital device in your life, and advancements in lithium battery tech over the past couple of decades have enabled everything from tiny smartwatches that can still last a full day, right up to electric vehicles with range in the hundreds of miles. But there are also countless myths out there about how the battery in your phone or laptop works, and how you should or shouldn't go about using and charging it. So let's dig into whether or not you're killing your batteries with bad charging habits, and whether things like fast charging, wireless charging, and software features can actually help. I'm Alex Dobie, this is XDA, let's get into it. So first off, you might have heard that you should always fully drain your battery down to zero and then fully recharge it to 100% before taking it off the charger. The argument here goes that if you only charge it to say 70 or 80 before using again, the battery will remember this lower charge level over time and it'll eventually become the new charge limit. If we're talking about batteries in modern consumer gadgets, this is wrong. But historically speaking, you might be surprised that it's actually not 100% BS. The origin of this belief comes from the early days of rechargeable batteries. From the 1980s to early 2000s, consumer electronics mainly used nickel cadmium and nickel metal high drive batteries, which were susceptible to this so-called memory effect. And so improper charging could lead the battery to eventually learn a lower max charge level over time, especially with NICAD cells. But since the mid 2000s, lithium batteries with their higher energy density have taken over, and because the chemistry of these batteries is different, they're mostly not susceptible to the memory effect. Some rechargeable AA and AAA batteries still use nickel metal hydride technologies as they last longer in storage than the lithium alternatives, but if it's portable and has a screen, chances are it's lithium powered and you don't need to worry about that memory effect. So if you never end up fully recharging your phone or laptop battery, that won't mean you're eventually unable to charge it to 100. In fact, as we'll get to in a little bit, avoiding a 100% charge for too much of the time might actually be the smarter move. Next, you might have heard that you should never let your phone run all the way down to zero, or you might not be able to charge it again, or that you might damage it in some other way by doing this. This one's basically true, but it doesn't specifically have to do with very low charge levels. With modern lithium batteries, what you want to avoid is keeping your device at very high or very low charge levels for extended periods. So sat on a charger all day at 100% is not great for long-term battery health, and equally sat in a drawer at 0% unused for weeks on end is equally bad. Very high charge levels over time can put stress on the battery's internal components like the cathode, causing them to prematurely age and reducing capacity. And very low charge levels can cause a condition known as deep discharge. Sorry. Deep discharge. Which can, in semi-rare cases, cause the voltage to drop to a level where it can no longer be charged at all. Very low charge levels, especially paired with low temperatures, can also cause a chemical change in the battery known as lithium plating, which can cause it to degrade, reducing longevity, or even causing it to become unsafe. So lithium batteries like the one in your phone or computer are happiest at the 20 to 80% charge level. It's the extremes either side of that that you want to avoid. That's why when you buy a new phone, you'll usually find it's charged somewhere around the 50% mark, the furthest point from either of those two danger zones. It's worth not freaking out about your charge levels day to day though. Your device's battery is designed to be used, so it's not necessarily bad if you charge it to 100% briefly before using it for the day. That said, if you do want to improve how well your battery will age over time, modern operating systems include a lot of features to help you out here. iOS 18 and many versions of Android, for example, include an option to cap your battery charge level at 80% if you find you aren't needing the full capacity of the cell every day. And smartphones in particular are pretty good at learning your usage patterns and adjusting things accordingly. In iOS, there's now an option to hold your charge at 80% until such time that you actually need to charge it up to 100%, for example, first thing in the morning. That's better than charging for maybe an hour at midnight to getting to 100% and then holding the battery there until you wake up in the morning. You're reducing the amount of time you spend in that 80 to 100% danger zone. And on the laptop side, Mac OS has a similar feature which dials back your Mac's battery level to 80% if you normally use your MacBook on AC power, with an easy manual override to boost to 100% if you need it. On the Windows side, there's no equivalent OS level feature in Windows at the time we're making this video, but many laptop makers like Samsung and Huawei have their own proprietary versions. 
When a battery swells, turning into what's technically termed a spiky pillow, it's bad news bears all round. A swollen lithium battery is a fire hazard, and if you have one or see signs of it in your device, you definitely should stop using it and safely dispose of it. And definitely don't charge it or try and squeeze it back into wherever it bulged out of. There are a bunch of different chemical processes that can contribute to battery swelling. Many of these can be exacerbated by bad charging habits, and some of these things we've already discussed, like keeping the charge very high or very low for long periods, or exposing the battery to very hot or very cold temperatures. Like humans, batteries are most comfortable around the 15 to 35 Celsius range. So charging your phone under a pillow or cooped up inside a bag, that's a bad idea. Charging your phone in a freezer? Stop it. Get some help. Now fast charging always represents a balance between convenience and battery aging. However you spin it, faster charging produces more heat, and excessive heat will age your battery quicker. Charging faster can also stress the battery in other ways, putting it under electrochemical stresses due to the higher current level involved. But there are ways to mitigate this so that your fast charging phone isn't necessarily on a fast track to a bloated, explosive grave. Heat spreaders can be used internally to draw excess heat away from the battery. The iPhone 16 Pro, for example, with its 45 watt charging, includes a steel battery casing for improved thermals. And dual cell batteries of the kind used in OnePlus and Oppo phones, as well as many foldables, can allow higher overall charging rates while subjecting each individual cell to lower rates of current. A device with a 5000 mAh capacity and 66 watt wire charging speeds, for example, might split it between two 2500 mAh cells each charging at 33 watts. It's easier on each individual cell and you still get the full power and fast charging speed. This especially makes sense for foldables because you've got to split your battery anyway, but flat phones like the OnePlus 12 also use dual cells. And in the laptop world, devices like the 16 inch MacBook Pro use a six cell setup. Most phone brands that do offer ultra high speed charging these days like OnePlus, Honor and Oppo pair them with smart charging software features of the kind we've talked about a few moments ago. Which makes sense, right? If you have a 100 watt plus charging system that refills your phone in 15 or 30 minutes and then leaves it at 100% for 8 hours overnight, that's very bad and done. It's also a problem that's very easy to solve with the right software. So bottom line, fast charging alone won't necessarily turn your phone's battery into a spicy pillow. But these things are always a balance. Faster charging is a nice convenience to have when you need it, but when you don't, slower charging is a better option to increase your battery's longevity. But even then, modern phones do include hardware and software to mitigate against the potential ill effects of that quicker charging. Most high-end phones support wireless charging through the Qi standard, and for many smartwatches like the Apple Watch, it's your only way to charge. In the early days of wireless charging, it was painfully slow. But today, some brands offer fast wireless charging speeds of up to 50 watts or more. For a lot of folks, the biggest concern with wireless charging has to do with heat. You're using a copper coil to transmit that power as opposed to plugging in directly, so it's just less efficient. And that heat only becomes more of an issue when you start pushing higher levels of power wirelessly. But that's why pretty much all super fast wireless chargers incorporate a big old fan into their design, either in the base where it sucks up air and channels it at the back of the phone, or just built into the back plate itself. It's still a less efficient way to charge your phone, but the active cooling prevents heat from building up and becoming too much of an issue. Besides which, both Android and iOS have protections built in to stop charging when temperatures reach excessive levels anyway. So does it generate more heat? Yes. Will it make your phone overheat? Unless you're doing a lot of hardcore gaming while wirelessly charging, probably not. How long your device's battery can retain a useful capacity depends on a variety of factors. The main laptop I use for editing, for example, a MacBook Pro, is more than two years old, has 80-something cycles on it, and still retains 98% of its original capacity. That's because it's mostly used on AC power, and macOS limits the charge to 80% when it's plugged in. The iPhone 15 Pro Max I recently traded in after a year was on 96% capacity after around 200 charge cycles. And it seems like every year on Twitter there's a contest to see whose iPhone can age the fastest. Generally though, you should expect to get at least a couple of years out of your phone's battery without any noticeable degradation, unless you are a very heavy user, of course. A lithium ion battery's life is typically between 300 to 500 cycles, and after that, its capacity will usually have dropped to around 80%.
But some modern lithium batteries can perform a lot better than this. Some of Oppo's Reno phones, for example, are rated to retain 80% capacity after as many as 1600 charge cycles, which is closer to five years of daily use. For peace of mind, iOS and some Android devices do let you check your number of charge cycles in the battery settings menu. And if it gets to that point, a battery swap is usually a pretty simple repair job for most major manufacturers. That's especially true if you're an iPhone owner. You might remember Apple went through a firestorm of bad press in the middle of the last decade for its practice of gradually downclocking the CPUs in its phones as its batteries aged, which maintained battery life but sometimes with a heavy hit to performance. Since that controversy, Apple's gotten a lot better at offering cheap and relatively simple battery replacements. Look, the bottom line is, unless you're doing something inherently weird with the way you're using your device or it's just very old, chances are you don't need to worry about your battery aging. Keeping it very hot or very cold or always on charge at 100% or in a drawer at zero, that's not ideal. But my recommendation would be to just use your device's battery normally. If you're charging overnight, make sure whatever software feature your device has to stop it staying at 100% for too long is enabled. If you're using it on AC power most of the time, maybe look at a charge limiting option to keep it capped at 80% or thereabouts. Otherwise, you can relax unless and until your battery starts looking like this, in which case, yeah, time to safely dispose of that thing. That's it for now. Let us know in the comments if this video helped you out or if you found it useful. Stick around and subscribe on YouTube for more deep dives like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.